Hi everyone, I'm Brian Glick. I'm a product manager here on YouTube. Um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about you know what's upcoming, what's new, what we did recently. Um, you know, a few things on the course site that I really love to show you guys, um, inform you about, hear your feedback on. Not all of it is you know necessarily related to the API, etc. But I'd love to hear your feedback on it. A lot of it, you know, where it makes sense, will eventually end up kind of getting integrated, you know, where it can into the API. Um, so I'm going to talk about five different things and one or two, well, five different recent things and one or two uh, new things coming up. Before I do, first thing I want to say is thank you very much. Um, it's really awesome that you guys are here today. Our developers on the site are some of our most savvy, vocal, most involved users. Um, the creativity has been amazing that we've seen so far. It's really inspired the team. Um, we're all really looking forward to see the stuff that you guys come up with. Um, so thanks. So first thing I'm going to talk about is something that a lot of users have been asking about, which is higher quality video. Um, especially like filmmakers and, and animators, et cetera, have been really asking for this. And by the way, it wasn't nearly as hard as you'd think it would be to find a finger mustache video in high quality, because there's only six of them. Um, and you really need it to see the you know, precise detail of the mustache on a finger. So high quality is very much needed there. Um, so yes, a lot of people have been asking for this and really excited by it. Um, but of course, you know, we're, we're trying to balance that to make sure that uh, as many people as possible can access YouTube, that it, you know, it, the video plays smoothly, that there's no like big wait before you watch a video. Um, so we're pretty happy with what we have so far. And one of the most common questions we've got is, you know, what do I need to do to make sure that my video is high quality? Um, what are the criteria to, to, to get my video encoded in high quality? What do people need to do to watch it? Um, so first of all, the very first thing is anything that we can make high quality, we will now. We're at that point where uh, if it's in, if the source is, is high quality enough, we can do it. And it needs a few different things. It needs to be at least 480 by 360. It needs to be at least 24 frames per second or higher. And then the bit rate kind of varies based on what it's been encoded in. Um, but in general, the higher, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, you know, we're playing with the settings and tweaking it all the time, but in general, the higher the better. So um, the other thing is because now we can upload uh, one gig files, you don't need to compress much. There's really not much that you need to do. Um, so please just, you know, send it as large as possible to us. And then, of course, for end users using it, um, there's a link in the lower right hand corner of the video to watch in high quality. Um, if you have an account, you can go into your, your account settings and you can choose to always view it in high quality or never view it in high quality. Um, and then eventually, you know, we'll try to make that determination automatically. You know, if we think you can handle high quality, we'll give it to you in high quality. Um, and eventually, it'll also end up in the player as high quality as well. So next, query suggestions, which is something we do now. Um, when you type a search query, we'll give you some suggestions. I'm sure you've seen this before. Um, it really saves your users a lot of time, help them make searches much more quickly. Um, and our data has actually been really interesting. We've seen that it saves, on average, about 50% of keystrokes. So previously, people needed to type about uh, 16 keystrokes per average search. Now it's down to about eight, which is fantastic. And it's especially popular uh, in China, in Japan, in Korea, I guess where it takes longer to type out characters. So uh, we've been really happy with that so far. Uh, another thing we've been really happy with is uh, our Rick Rolls April Fool's prank. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this, but um, all the featured videos on the homepage went to Rick Astley's uh, a video of Never Gonna Give You Up. If you're not familiar with the Rickroll meme, um, we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, our users, the ones that at least got it, they seem to enjoy it as well. Uh, in fact, there were many people that had no idea what was going on. Our support queues on the day of were actually flooded with emails saying, uh, your site's been hacked, you know, what's going on? YouTube's broken, or I really wanted to watch the video of that Rube Goldberg uh, Star Wars machine or whatever it was. Um, so we, we had a lot of fun with that. Actually, my favorite part was uh, for the press inquiries that we got, we responded to them with a statement, something to the effect of, um, our users know the rules and so do we. We will never give them up, we will never let them down. So. Yeah, had fun with that. Um, and actually, I thought it was going to help kill the Rickroll meme, and you know, the prank would just go away. Uh, I'm sorry to say, I checked this out the other day. We had this highly scientific survey or, or study. Rickrolls are actually up 19% since we did the prank. Uh, you can see this better in a, a chart here. Um, so it's actually higher. And I mean, of course, it was much higher right after the prank, but in the, in the, even in the past two weeks, it's still higher than it used to be, uh, which is really depressing. So I, I want to take this opportunity to formally apologize on behalf of YouTube for persisting this joke longer than it really should have been. So we're sorry. 
Uh, okay, so getting back into the serious stuff, uh, YouTube Insight, which really answers the question that anytime you upload a video, the very first question you have is, uh, you know, who's watching my video? Where are they coming from? You know, how did they find it, et cetera? Um, so I'm actually gonna show a, a quick demo of that. Yeah, here we go, this is in my account. So you can see here that, uh, here's a chart of all my videos and where the, the views are and where the spikes are. You can see, well, I've only got two videos, so I'm not a very prolific video uploader. You can see I'm mostly popular in the US and Canada. Uh, it's mostly dudes watching my videos. Um, uh, mostly younger people, I, I, I don't make very appealing videos, I think. Uh, so if I go into one of my videos, you can see here a bit more detail. You know, on the views, you can see how people are finding it. You can click to see exactly what their furs are. You can see all the demographics. Um, so that's a really cool feature that we've, we've gotten a lot of good positive feedback from. Um, and we've actually uh, seen some really interesting things happen from that. Like for example, Weezer released one of their music videos recently on YouTube, uh, Pork and Beans. And they used Insight to find out that, you know, the core demographic watching the video, they were like 35 to 45. Um, uh, they were generally, you know, men, they were people reading like tech blogs, etc. So the producer now knows that next time that they have a concert, they're not just going to advertise in all the traditional places of music blogs and music sites and stuff. They're actually going to start advertising on places like Engadget and TechCrunch and Gizmodo, etc. Um, because that's, they now know that's where their market is. So it's like Insight is now kind of YouTube's, or sorry, one of the world's largest focus groups, which is really cool. There's another fun story of a record label, and I can't say which one, unfortunately. Um, that sent a CD of, of a new artist out to um, radio stations all across the US. And uh, they told them to play the song and then they went into YouTube for the music video, the corresponding music video, and they were able to see that there was a radio station, well, that, that Kansas, for some reason, no one was watching the video in Kansas. And then they discovered that the radio station in Kansas just wasn't playing the song, which is really cool. So it like corresponded from, from radio play to YouTube views. Um, so anyway, there's all sorts of really cool stuff there. And, you know, we're, we're thinking of new exciting ideas, stuff all the time. Like, you think it'd be really cool if I could find out, like, for example, maybe people in, in North Carolina rated my video one star, but people in California rated it five stars. Like, really cool, interesting trends that way. So you could get, like, really precise detail about, like, how people are engaging with your video. Uh, let's see what else. Personalized homepage. We pushed this out a few weeks ago. Feedback's been pretty good so far. Um, it really answers the question of, you know, what should I watch today? It acts kind of as your window into YouTube. Like, here's, here's my world, here's stuff that's going on. It's very personalized to me. I can customize this page. I can find out, you know, what my subscriptions are up to. Uh, we make recommendations based on, you know, what you've watched before, what you favorited. There's all sorts of, like, inputs and signals that go into it. Um, uh, you know, there's friend activity now too. Like John spoke earlier about, you know, the the favorite information that's available in the API, and you know, like friend feed is now picking that up. But this is really kind of the first time on YouTube that we've had a feed of like what people are actually doing and what your friends are doing, and um, and really sort of giving you that pulse on what's happening around around your community. And this is going to get really interesting if we get to take this concept further, like really make your identity kind of portable and very fluid across across YouTube and then across the web. Um, lots of really exciting actions, I think, that we could incorporate into this sort of data. And I imagine a lot of this will eventually end up in the API as well. Uh, and then the page itself is, has done well. Like, we've seen an increase in subscriptions from people using the page. Um, so it's actually, you know, subscriptions are kind of like the currency of YouTube. So people are actually, like, following people more and more on YouTube now, um, since it's such a prominent part of that page. Uh, people are, there's a, a big drop off in in bounces and exits from the home page, which is great. People are actually engaging on the page. So we're really kind of, you know, hopefully making this not only more useful to users, but also making this more useful to anyone that uploads a video so that they can get, you know, discovered and, and found a lot easier now. Uh, this is a fun one. Video annotations we pushed out, uh, which is letting people easily add uh, commentary, speech bubbles, you know, all sorts of like little descriptive things, uh, links within videos. Um, Quick show of hands, how many people have seen an annotated video before? Cool, most people. Is there an API for it? Not yet, no. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. Um, how, quick show of hands, how many people have actually created an annotated video? Okay, a few people. Cool. So I'm gonna show a quick demo of, of a, a cool one, one that I like a lot actually, uh, which is this one here. You can't hear it, but basically this is an instructional video teaching you 
um, how to play one of Nirvana songs and you know the tabs are up there and the instructions are up there and you know at the right time it pops up with what you need to do so it's a really cool application of, of video annotations there's some other really cool ones that I've seen like there's a choose your own adventure out there where you're, you have to search for someone's cat and you can choose to search in the the, the living room, you can choose to search in the bathroom, and as you click within the video, it goes off to another video that shows the results of how that search went on. Um, so some really creative and cool uses that are coming out of the community, and we're really excited to see this. Uh, they, they don't right now, but I mean, we rolled it out recently, so now it's, now it's international, that it's on the channel pages. Uh, we're looking to put it in more places all the time. So I'm going to jump back over here. And annotations have actually done pretty well since so we launched them. In the very first week that we had them out there, we had over 100,000 uh, videos annotated in those seven days alone. Um, they actually make up a pretty significant portion of our, our daily views now, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, we're obviously looking to take it forward all the time in, in new ways. Uh, so that's it for the features that have come out recently. Now I'm going to talk about one that's not uh, quite out yet, but I want to show to you guys. and what you think about it, it's, it's GeoSearch. So this is taking advantage of the fact that videos are now tagged with uh, geographic data. Like you can actually go in and say, okay, I, re I recorded this video here in San Francisco in Golden Gate Park, uh, or I recorded it in New York. You can tag your video with all this data. Um, so let me show you that. Here's my YouTube page, and I'm going to go up to search and search for San Francisco, if I can spell it. And you'll see at the top, well, you get your regular search results, but then you also have a box here that shows here are the videos that were actually recorded in San Francisco according to the tags, which is really cool. Um, and you don't even need to search for a keyword. You can actually, and I'm going to cheat a little bit by skipping a step here, um, you can actually direct your search within a certain search area with the Google Maps integration. So here I've done a search for all the videos that were recorded in Las Vegas at the Desert Passage at Aladdin which is actually a mall now in Las Vegas, but 10 years ago it used to be a casino, the Aladdin Casino. And if you scroll down, you'll see that a lot of the videos deal with the, the demolition of the hotel. Because the people that recorded them went back and they tagged it as saying, this is where it's from. Uh, and now I'll actually take this, and I'm going to drag it across the street to the Bellagio Hotel. And I'm going to redo my search. Let me make sure I get part of the street in there. And you can see I'm getting a lot of videos showing the Bellagio's water fountains out front of the Bellagio. So the message there is definitely like start tagging your videos, put the metadata in there, like say where you recorded it. There's all sorts of really exciting things we can do with this information in the future. So that's it for what's new with YouTube. Have some time for Q and A's. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. That's not a feature that I'm uh, managing directly, so I'm not 100% sure on the plans, but, you know, we obviously want to do what makes sense, and, you know, it's going to be really exciting for the community to use, so... Um, I'm not honestly sure of the answer. Yeah. What's the uh, most requested feature you get? Oh, man. Most requested feature. Um, well, one thing that I, I get a lot is around channels. Like, people, um, you know, channels just aren't quite as well understood as, you know, we'd like them to be on YouTube. So a lot of people say, you know, I want to do more with my channel. I want to, you know, maybe I want to have uh, more than one channel. I want to do, you know, some, some really cool stuff there. So, you know. We get a lot of requests around that, so we're starting to think of ways to make channels more useful. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think there might be a, a technical challenge around, um, you know, because there are overlays, I think we need to sort that out with how that works with the, the video overlay. I'm not sure what the answer is there. Um, you, you asked about geotags? Well, I mean, any video can be geotagged, whether you know it's monetized or not. So, yeah. I 
think that's coming up pretty soon. Um, at least six months. I'm I'm not sure for how long, but it's it's been in there for a while. The user applies it, yes. Um, I, I'm not sure if any of it comes in through automatically right now, based on information that you know maybe a camera knows where it was recorded. You know, obviously that'd be really excited if we can do that. Um, the one way that I'm sure that you can do it is when you go into my videos and you manage your videos per video, you can just drag on a map and say this is where I recorded it. Well, yes, yeah, certainly with that, that demo, you can just type in an address and say, you know, I live at 123 Main Street. Let's find out everything that's around here. It'll let you do that. And you can choose the size of the radius, too. So you can say, I just want to see everything in my whole city, or I want to see everything um, that's, uh, you know, just one block away from me. You can really do all sorts of cool things with it. On your search API, when people post their videos, mm -hmm. just street address, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure about the API, like, um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't think so today, but uh, I'm not an API guy, so. Any other? Yep. As of right now, yeah, that's the only way to access it. Um, yeah. Certainly, yeah. And in fact, with the home page, I mean, you can see that you can choose which modules you want on your home page. There are six of them that are available right now by default. But obviously, you know, it's you know very conceivable that we'll offer more modules for you to choose from. Uh, and then one of them might be like not just recommended for you videos, but recommended for you channels, especially if, you know, answering your earlier question, like we can make channels a little more, you know, uh, useful. Cool. Any other questions? I, I don't know. I don't know much about the geocoding as it relates to the API, so I, I can't really answer that. But uh, John might be able to, if he can catch him out in the hall. Uh, I think it'll be in the, I, I can't really say, I don't want to promise if you know we need to change things. Um, I think we're doing a little bit of limited experimentation right now. Um, but if all goes well, I, I don't think it'll be very long before you can play with that. Yeah, open, well, I mean, open social can mean so many different things. Like, you know, do we make, uh, you know, par portions of YouTube like open social containers, you know, uh, friend connect, uh, does that, you know, play in at all? Um, we're still figuring that out. Like, obviously, we're trying to, you know, build the best user experience we can. So, you know, we're looking at everything right now. What's that? Uh, an iGoogle gadget? Yeah, yeah, to make that a, something you can plug into, say, your MySpace. Put a YouTube gadget in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Anything else? We still have a little bit of time if anyone has more questions. If not, we'll go to break a little early. Great, cool. So I think now there's, there's well, it's supposed to be a 15-minute break, but we're done a little early, so I think we have a bit of a longer break. We're supposed to be handing out surveys, actually, um, so that, let me just see my notes here. Um, so that we can get your feedback on, you know, 
uh, since this is our first, you know, Powered by YouTube event, your, your feedback on how things have gone, um, what, what you found that works well, what, you know, we could do differently. Um, and then once you have your survey, if you could turn it into the registration desk, you'll get a t-shirt, you'll be entered for a raffle. Uh, we're handing out five flip video cameras uh, during the, the happy hour. So fill out those surveys and we'll be back here at 4.30 for the panel. Thanks everyone.